Welcome to part four and the final part of this tutorial series where we're creating this low poly isometric kitchen scene in Blender. So in this part, I'm going to be giving you an overview of how I modeled all of the different prop objects, like the different dishes and the microwave and the blender and all of the different objects that I added in the scene. And then after that, we'll do the rendering and the compositing to get the final image. And if you don't want to model all of the prop objects yourself, then you could purchase the project files of this tutorial. And when you purchase the project files, you'll get a blender file with just these prop objects. And so you could append in the prop objects into your scene and then just place them all around. Around. But I will also right now just be going over how I modeled these objects. And I would definitely encourage you to create your own kitchen objects and place them around differently so that your artwork looks more unique. So the first objects here were these like wine bottles and these objects were pretty simple. So what I just did is added a cylinder and I just extruded the cylinder up and scaled it down to make the bottle. And then also for the cork here, I just duplicated the top object and extruded it down. And then I gave these objects some different materials. So a little cork material and a glass material. And then I duplicated these objects and I made some different color ones. So maybe this one has like some avocado oil or some olive oil. And maybe this one is like a wine bottle bottle and then I have some other bottles here. Then the next objects were like a salt and pepper shaker and this was pretty simple. Again this was just a low poly cylinder so I just modeled these basic salt and pepper shakers and then I just added a metal material to them. And then I wanted to add some pans so again this was just a low poly cylinder and I just extruded up the cylinder and then I inserted it back in and then also right here I just added a cube and I extruded the cube out to make the handle. And then the dishes was pretty much the same thing so you can see the shape of the dishes is actually like the same as the pan and so again I just added a cylinder and then I extruded it up and then gave it some thickness and if you've created a dish object and you want to stack the dishes up on top of each other very quickly a really easy way to do this is to press shift D then hit Z bring it up on the Z axis and then just place it and because I duplicated it and moved it up all in one action I can then press shift R shift R is going to repeat the last action and so you can see I can very quickly make a stack of dishes. And then I just gave these dishes a shiny white material. And then I did the same thing for these bowl objects and I made a few stacks of bowls. And then I also wanted to make like a cereal box or maybe a box of flour. So these objects are very simple. These are just some cube objects which I scale up and then I added some loop cuts and then I added some different materials for the cereal box. Now I also wanted to model some mugs and cups, so again these objects were really easy. I just added a cylinder and I just extruded the cylinder up and then I inset the faces and brought the cylinder back down. And then also for the handle here I just added a cube and I just extruded the cube and rotated it around. Kind of like what we did with the sink faucet earlier in this tutorial series. And then I also wanted to add some more fancy glasses like some wine glasses. So again this was just a cylinder which I extruded and as I extruded it I scaled it to make the thin part and then make the thicker part. And to help save some time, you can duplicate these objects and then you can make them look slightly different. So I made a taller wine glass and a shorter wine glass. And also right here, I made some different cup objects. And then I also modeled this very basic soap bottle here. So it's just like a cube, which I extruded out and scaled it down and I kind of squished it down. And then I also added a cylinder and just did some very basic modeling. And then I added a few different metal materials. Now I thought it would be cool to add like a low poly rag, kind of like a dish rag. So I actually used the cloth physics to make this. And I actually have a complete beginner tutorial on cloth physics for beginners. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, I'll have the link in the description. So I just did a very basic cloth simulation. I just had the cloth fall on a table and then to make it look low poly, give it the low poly style right over here on the modifier properties. I added the decimate modifier. So without the decimate modifier, you can see that this is just kind of a low poly cloth, but you can add the decimate modifier and then you can turn the ratio down. And as you turn the ratio down, it's going to take away more and more of the mesh. And so it's going to make it look low poly. So that's just a little trick for giving the low poly style to higher poly objects. And then I also added a sponge. So again, this was just a cube, which I scaled out. And then I added some different loop cuts to subdivide it. And then I just made it kind of random, made it kind of popping up and down. And to make the materials look more spongy, I turned up the subsurface. And then I also gave it like an orange subsurface color. And so if I go into rendered mode, you can kind of see what that's doing. So you can see by adding the subsurface, it makes it look more spongy and it looks more soft. 
project. And I also modeled a very simple light socket. So these were just some cylinders which I extruded back into a cube. And I put a couple of those light sockets on the wall. And then I also wanted to model a pot. So again, this was just a cylinder which I extruded down. And then I also extruded out one of the faces here on the edge to make the handle and also a few more dishes. And then I also thought it would be nice to add some fruit. So for these low poly apples, I just pressed shift A, I went here to mesh, and I added the icosphere. And I used the icosphere to make these cool low poly apples. And then I also added a few different apple materials because I didn't want all the apples to have the exact same shade of red. So I added a few different apple materials, some a bit lighter red and some a bit darker red. And then I also added the little stems here with just a brown color. And I put the apples in a bowl. I also thought it would be cool to model a low poly clock and I actually wanted to give you a little tip for creating this round pattern. So what you can do is add a low poly cylinder and then I also added a cube here and I just scaled the cube way down and then I scale it up on the Z axis. So what I want to do is take this cube and I want to duplicate it and rotate it around the clock. So to do this, you can press Shift S, and that's going to bring up some different settings here with the Pi menu, and I'm going to bring the cursor to selected. And because the origin point is in the very center of the cylinder, it brought the 3D cursor to the center there. So now what I can do is go into edit mode, and I can select the cube object. Now I want to duplicate the cube and I want to rotate it around, but you can see when I rotate it, it's not rotating it from the center here. So what I can do is click right here on the transform pivot point and I can change this to the 3D cursor. So now if I press one on the numpad for front view, I can rotate this and you can see it's going to rotate around the clock. So what I can do now is press Shift D to duplicate, then after that I can hit R to rotate, and I could type in 90 and enter just to rotate that around. Then I can press Shift R and Shift R will repeat the last action. So now I can see these are evenly spaced. I could also press the L key with my mouse hovered over these cubes, and I could press Shift D, then R to rotate, and I could type in 45 and then enter so it's in the center of those ones. And then you could again just select the other cubes here and you could press Shift D to duplicate, then R to rotate, and you could type in half of 45, so like 22, actually 22.5 and enter. And so that is basically how I modeled the low poly clock. Now for the plant object, I actually used a 3D model which I had already created, and that is my potted plant tutorial series. It's a tutorial series that I created like two and a half years ago, so quite a while back. But that's something that I wanted to mention in this video, and that is if you're creating a big scene like this with all these low poly assets, if you can use assets that you've already created or just download an asset pack, then it's gonna save you so much time because you won't have to hand model everything. Or if you've already created some different low poly scenes, you could just append in the 3D models that you've already created and save a lot of time. So for the plant object, I just added in the low poly plant project files from my tutorial that I created a while back, but then I just deleted all of the modifiers so that it looks low poly. And then also for this object here, for the dirt object to make it look low poly, I clicked here on add modifier and I added the decimate modifier. And so when you add the decimate modifier, you can turn the ratio down and as you turn the ratio down, it's going to get rid of more and more of the topology. And so this is a really cool method for making higher poly objects look low poly. Now the toaster was pretty simple. I just added a cube. And then on each side here, I added some bevels, some bevels on the cube. And then I also added some loop cuts and just extruded these parts back in. And then also the levers on the toaster were pretty simple. They were just some cubes with some bevels. And then I also wanted to create a cutting board and a low poly knife. So this cutting board was very simple. It was just a cube and I just deleted the faces in here. I added some loop cuts, deleted the faces, and then filled in the edges. And then I also added the same wood material that I added to the low poly stool in the 3D scene. And then just modeled a low poly kitchen knife. So this was like a plane and I just extruded out the plane and then gave it some thickness. And then also the handle was a cube that I extruded out. 
out. And then I also created a low poly microwave. And again, this was pretty simple. So this was just a cube and I inserted some of the faces and then extruded them out to give like the different panels and the door. And then also all the buttons here, these were just some cubes and some cylinders. I also modeled a blender. So again, this was just using a cylinder and I pretty much just extruded the cylinder up and then scaled the cylinder down. And I just did that all along the blender and also modeled just some very basic pots and pans. Now for the teapot object, I actually used a built-in Blender add-on. So to enable the add-on, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons tab, you can search for extra and you can turn on the add mesh extra objects add-on. So once the add-on is enabled, you can press shift A, you can go to mesh and you can see there's gonna be all these extra objects. So to add the teapot, you can click here on extras and then you can click on the teapot plus. And it's gonna add this basic teapot teapot but then to make the teapot lower poly right behind me on the add teapot settings you can turn the resolution down so I just turned the resolution down to one and that was the teapot object and then I just gave it kind of a shiny blue material I also created a knife set with a knife block and for this I used the same knife handle that I created earlier and then the knife block was just a cube which I extruded up and I gave it a bevel along the edge and then I also just gave it a dark wood material. I also modeled this basic cloth by just adding a plane and then I just extruded the plane down and then I also kind of brought the vertices forward and backwards to make it kind of wavy. You could also use the cloth physics in Blender to create this if you wanted to. And then the last object that I added here is a very basic wooden step stool. And again, if you'd like to purchase these low poly assets, then I will have a link in the description to where you can purchase these low poly assets and add them into your 3D scene if you'd like to. So once you have all of your low poly assets, I want to show you a really easy method for placing the assets around your scene. So you could, you know, press G to grab, move it over and move it over like that, but there's actually an easier method. So what you can do is hold down the shift key and then you can right click and holding down the shift key and right clicking is going to place the 3D cursor. Now I actually use the right click select in Blender because I used Blender before Blender 2.8 and right click was the default so I just got used to it. Um, so what I actually do is just left click to place the 3D cursor. But for most of you who use the left click select, you're just going to hold down the shift key and then left click to place the 3D cursor. So what you can do is just place the 3D cursor to wherever you want the asset to be. And when you place the 3D cursor, it should place the cursor on the surface of an object. Then you can just select your 3D asset and then you can press Shift S. And I'm gonna hold down the Shift S button and then I'm going to move my mouse up to selection to cursor and then let go. And you can see that it's going to place the asset where the 3D cursor is. And then you can move it up, you can scale it, you can rotate it and place it where you want. So this is a super quick and effective way to quickly place all the assets. So I can select this object here, and then what I can do is place the 3D cursor like right there, select this object, press Shift S, move my mouse up, and then let go of the Shift S button, and that'll place the asset right there. And you can also press the period on the numpad to zoom into the object. So I'll just do that a few more times just to show you again. So I'm going to place the 3D cursor. I'll place it here on the stove. Then I can just select the pot object. I'll press Shift S, move my mouse up to selection to cursor and let go. And then it's going to place the pot. And I can press the period on the numpad to zoom into it. And then I can just hand place it and get it to where I want. I'll place the 3D cursor right here. Then I'm going to select the clock object and I can press Shift S, selection to cursor and it moves the clock over there and then I can just like bring it forward. So you can just continue to do that and place all of the different kitchen assets in your 3D scene. So I'm now going to be doing the rendering and then the compositing to get the finished image. So if you click right here on the render properties, I am going to be using 500 samples here on the render samples. You can open up the sampling tab, go to render. I'm going to use 500 samples because there are going to be some pretty dark areas like right back in here, there's some dark shadows. And so it will look a little bit grainy if I don't turn the samples up. But if this is going to take too long for your computer to render at 500 samples, you could definitely turn the sample down so it, it'll render faster. And then I will also be using the cycles rendering engine because I am going for realistic lighting. But if you'd like to, you can change the render engine over to Eevee and the scene does work great in Eevee as well. So then before you render the image, you can just press control S to save the Blender file. And then you can click here on render and click on render image or use the shortcut key of F12. 
and the render has finished. So I'm now just gonna do a little bit of compositing to make the image look nicer. So I'm gonna click right here to go to the compositing tab, and then you can click on use nodes to use the compositing nodes. So when you click on use nodes, it should give you a render layers and a composite. So I'm gonna press shift A, I'm gonna to go to the search, and I'm gonna first search for the RGB curves just to do a little bit of color correction, and I'll put the RGB curves in between the render layers and the composite. And then to see the image in the background with the node wrangler enabled you can hold down the control and shift key and then select the rgb curves and that's going to add the viewer node and it's going to preview the image in the background now to make this a bit more contrasty i'm going to click to add a dot here and drag it up to make it a bit brighter and i can also drag this down to make it a bit darker so everything is a bit sharper and a bit more contrasty and if you wanted to you could edit the colors further so you could click on the r g or b for red, green, and blue, and you could like add a bit more red or a bit less red. I might add a bit more red. And also here on the green, I could add less green or more green. I think I might just delete that by hitting the X key. And also here on the B for blue, if I wanted to add a tiny bit more blue, I could. So the RGB curves is a really great node for doing color correction. And then the last thing that I wanna do is just add a denoise node, cause you can see the image looks a bit noisy. So I'll press Shift A go to the search, and I'm gonna search for the denoise node. And I can just drop the denoise node here after the render layers, and I also I can click on the accurate and just change it to fast, because I find it doesn't really affect the quality if I change it to fast. So now the compositing is finished, so then to save this image, you can select the viewer node, and then you can press the N key to open up the side panel, and you can click here on node, and make sure the viewer node is selected when you do this. And then right here, you can click on save this image button. And I will just save this as low poly kitchen and I will just save this image. So with that finished, this is going to wrap it up for this tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can purchase the finished tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube, you can also check out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this tutorial series and you'd like to send me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube underneath this video, and I do appreciate your support. And if you'd like to watch more low poly tutorials, then I have a low poly blender tutorial playlist with all of my other blender low poly tutorials. You can find that tutorial playlist with the link in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching.